So let's talk about what's been going on in Starbase. Holy shnikes, to quote Chris Farley from Tommy Boy. Starbase is moving at warp nine. Ludicrous speed, they've gone to plaid. The orbital launch table that was moved to the launch site was lifted up and placed on the six legs. Finally, it's there, we got it done. Well, we didn't do anything, they got it done. <laughs> Local John Randolph captured uh, a little time lapse of their attempts to get that big old beast on that, on that stand. It's freaking insane, man. They're gonna full send it, brah. Somebody tell this guy to get on there and sacrifice himself. Just hold that thing up. No, we're gonna get in the right place to squish. He's wearing a hard hat. He'll be fine. Elon said that thing weighs 370 tons. Stage zero, which is everything needed to launch and catch the rocket, is at least as hard as the booster or ship itself. Yeah, I can't imagine all the work that even the photographers that are on site taking all these awesome videos and pictures for us, all the work that they that they missed, that we never even got to see, all that that went unnoticed, unglorified, out of the limelight, you know, so much effort has been done. So to any SpaceX employees watching, keep it up, bras. Now, the next step for them is to get out their levels, walk up there on top of the orbital launch table, put them down so they can look at the little bubbles and make sure they're in between the two lines because it needs to be level and it has to match they have to ask to match the booster fittings. They'll find out on about Tuesday, which would be today. Said booster, booster four, was spotted by our good friend Nick on Friday night receiving its new grid fins. Our good old buddy John Randolph was there as well, clicking away with his camera, just in case there aren't enough pictures of the super heavy grid fins. Now you can see that they are extended, okay? They aren't folded down and these are fixed in place. They won't be folding down and they don't really look like titanium, do they? They kind of look like junk steel. Elon did confirm that they are fixed in place, so it kind of leads us to two uh, reasonable assumptions. One is that these are just going to be placeholders until they get the actuating fins installed. And the reason that they got these fixed ones in place installed is because maybe he wants to put this on display for a Starship presentation that he promised uh, to Austin Bernard a, a few months back. For those of you who haven't been around long enough, the last Starship presentation was in 2019. Yours truly got to go there. It was fun. Um, and they had uh, a starship quickly put together. I can't remember what starship it was, but they quickly put together a starship and had it on display during that presentation. I'm sure you guys have all seen that video on SpaceX's website. So one of the assumptions is maybe they're doing that again with the fully stacked starship super heavy for the presentation, if there's really going to be one. And the other assumption is that they're just going to fly this first orbital test with those grid fins sticking out. I mean, why not? It is possible. They don't have to be completely aerodynamic because they got fuel to, to waste. While this flight is orbital, the Starship itself isn't exactly going to orbit. It's From what I understand, its perigee is going to be less than the altitude needed for orbit because it is going to splash down off the coast of Hawaii, so it's not going to need to do a full orbit around the Earth. It would shock me if they did an orbital flight with the Grindafins out, but it's not like I haven't been shocked before. I was kind of surprised when they launched, what was it, like SN5 or 6 with an off-center Raptor engine, but they did it. Regardless, grid fin designs clearly work, but do they maximize payload? Good chance that they do not. Something with much more drag to reduce terminal velocity and so reducing landing propellant might have better performance, not sure of potential future optimization. So it sounds like Elon's not 100% sold on the grid fins anymore. We may be seeing something better, maybe, maybe not. I'm sure that's not on his priority list because as he's saying, grid fins do work. I guess the saying goes, if it's not broken, don't fix it but uh, something to improve later down the road, maybe. The top half and the bottom half of Booster 4 met on Friday night, getting fully stacked there in the high bay. Our friend Ryan, aka Starship Gazer, was also in town to feast his eyes upon Her Majesty. And then on Sunday night, things started getting super ethereal. Installing Starship booster engines for first orbital flight. This is going orbital, guys, but it's not gonna get there without lighting those boomy flamethrowers. I tell you what, man. His little ex-boy there won the lottery of life. What I would pay for Elon to hold me like that. Full props go out to all the SpaceX engineers that showed up on Sunday night to, to get this done, as well as Nick himself for going down there and, and watching it all happen. <clears throat> it's just insane what they got accomplished in like a 12-hour time span. So 7.50 p.m. Sunday, August 1st, there are now three Raptors literally lined up under BN4. We're just getting started, baby. Just a couple hours later, 11.27 p.m., 12th Raptor of the night, RB6 just rolled out. 
A couple hours later, 1.44 a.m., 19 Raptors deep. This one is RB20. And 5.54 a.m., 25th Raptor to roll out this morning is RB22, Raptor Boost 22. Nick also spotted some COPVs arriving on site for Booster 4 installation. So good eye there, eagle-eyed missile man Nick. Our old friend Austin Bernard was also there to capture the black magic of some SpaceX engineers making a Raptor engine lift off into the air without lighting it. By noon the following day, which was yesterday, Monday, August 2nd, Elon twatted that the Raptors were on super heavy. Look, look at this, man. Zoom in here. Boy, are their measuring skills spot on. These things are shoulder to shoulder, not an inch in between, it looks like. Now, remember, these outer ones don't have to gimbal, so they don't need any extra room between them. But that's still really impressive that they fit all those on there, like, perfectly. I'm in awe by it because whenever I measure empty space in my house for, like, furniture, we always have to throw the furniture away because it's too big <laughs> or get a new house. So all 29 Raptor engines were installed on the booster and four grid fins as well ahead of its first orbital flight. Now, notice over the last 48 hours, over all the things we've already gone over, there's been no mention by Elon or SpaceX about a Starship presentation. They've just been saying orbital flight, orbital flight, orbital flight. This is for the orbital flight. So we'll take that for what it's worth. We'll talk more about the orbital mission here in a little bit. But right now, as we speak, Booster 4 is making its way from the high bay down to the orbital launch site. This video provided by Lab Padre, obviously. Thank you very much, Lewis. It hasn't made it the whole way yet. This is live right now from Lewis's live stream. This is, and this is where we're at. You can see right now we're live at 2.14 p.m. Eastern time, but it is on the move. It was stalled there for a little bit, but we are on the move now. Look at those Raptor engines. That is freaking awesome, man. But let's move on and talk a little bit about the other half of the Super Heavy rocket, the SN20 Starship. On Saturday, Nick emailed me a couple photos that he took of some Raptor Vax arriving on site. Three of them to be exact. I think one of them was actually transported away from the site afterwards, so we definitely got at least two. Of course, Starship needs three Raptor Vax, but we already had one on site from before, so we should be good as far as engines are concerned. Keep in mind, although it, the bell nozzle looks bigger because it is bigger, that doesn't mean the engine's more powerful. It's not. It's about the same ISP as this, the sea level Raptor engine. Although Elon did tease squeezing the throat a little bit of these to give them more specific impulse, but that hasn't happened yet. They're just optimized to operate in a vacuum because in the vacuum of space, you have way less pressure than there is at sea level with all that atmosphere pressing down on you. So in space, that plume that you see in those live SpaceX launches spreads out really quick while this bell nozzle is optimized to allow more efficiency and use more of those uh, exhaust molecules to really push that rocket, Newton's third law. Work continues on the upper half of the SN20 vehicle. Crews have been installing heat shield tiles on the belly side of the, of the nose cone there, as well as the underside of the forward fins. Elon has been so busy that he hasn't showered in several days. We are going hardcore with Starbase Surge. The lower half of the vehicle, the, the tank section, was rolled out of the mid bay on Monday. You can see a lot of its tiles have already been installed, but they moved it out of the mid bay so they could attach the aft fins to it. Both Nick and Starship Gazer were there to capture all that happening. When asked by Alan Dale, is there a render of how the catch of the booster will work? Something we all really want to know. Elon responded, we'll post once we have a decent simulation. Our first design will probably be far from the bullseye. But if it's an animated simulation you want, we got you, bro. Thanks to Robos Bomb who emailed me this file that he uh, has been working on for like the last three months. This is really impressive. He's, he's quite the artist. This is his artistic perspective of how he sees the orbital launch going, but there is no catch included. He was right to splash these down in the Pacific because that's actually what's going to happen. If you want to watch this entire animation, I highly recommend you do check out his YouTube channel. There's a link in the description. Now, we can all agree, especially since SpaceX has started receiving reinforcements, that uh, engineers and crews have been working at a crazy impressive pace. I'll be the first to admit that I felt August 5th was a way too ambitious timeline to get a fully stacked Starship Super Heavy on a at least completed enough pad down at the launch site, but uh, it's looking more and more likely that that's actually going to happen thanks to these reinforcements and the hard work all around. But don't make the mistake, don't get your hopes up believing that you're going to see this orbital flight on August 5th because you're not. Unless, of course, SpaceX decides to SN8 this thing and just launch without the FAA's approval. Because we got to keep in mind, for months now, the FAA has been doing an environmental assessment of the uh, Boca Chica area, studying the impact of SpaceX's activities down there on the local surrounding environment. 
And right now, currently, as it stands, the FAA is still you know, undergoing its draft EA, environmental assessment, which has yet to be released. And once it is released, this draft EA, the FAA will provide it for public review and comment. Now, once that happens, and I couldn't tell you when that's going to be, there's one of three courses of actions that could follow. And these include preparations for preparations of an environmental impact statement, which is an EIS because the proposed actions, environmental impacts would be significant. So this is basically what we don't want to happen because if an EIS has to be done, then it's going to take a lot longer. Nothing's going to be launching from, you know, nothing big is going to be launching from Starbase anytime soon. Or if they find that there wasn't anything worth worrying about, they could issue a finding of no significant impact a FONSI or issuance of a mitigated FONSI providing that for mitigation measures to address the proposed actions, environmental impacts. So as long as everything's going to be done by the books and one's going to be cutting corners or just ignoring the, <laughs> ignoring the FAA or the government, it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing a launch at least probably not this month. I think that would be wishful thinking, maybe September at best. But if, if it goes the bad route, the EIS route, we could be looking at this year if we're lucky. Thank you guys for watching this preview of episode 251. If you would like more SpaceX news in your week, you can watch these Tuesday episodes on our Patreon or YouTube membership page for as little as $3 a month. Just check out the links in the description below.